Welcome to the second episode of Cryptocurrently. I'm your host, Delkes, and today our feature project is Haunted Space. We're joined here with Leonardo, the CMO of the game. Leonardo, thank you for coming and talking Hello. with us. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. What about good. you? Good. I'm, I'm great. I'm excited to talk about the project. The game looks really cool. Um, so... But before we get into the game, uh, just tell me a little bit about yourself. You know your your backstory, how you get in, got into here, and um, yeah, how you got involved with all of this. So basically, uh, what what I started to do since I was eighteen, seventeen uh, is e-commerce, and so everything related to e-commerce, so marketing. Uh, and we, I started with like uh, uh, mainly drop shipping and things like that. And after that, I started building uh, brands. And after that, I created uh, an agency that was managing the marketing for brands. And so in the meanwhile that I started doing this, I also had a partner that is Federico, that is one of the co-founder of Haunted Space. And uh, Federico, and me and Federico had uh, made in the, in the past years an e-commerce with the other founder, that is Luca. And Luca is also the founder of Italian Games Factory. They is the one that made the actual project out at space. So that's how everything was basically connected. I know it's a little bit complicated, but basically when we are going to, oh, I'm going to explain the project everything will look uh, way, way, way easier. Okay, cool. Very cool. Um, so you said you, you started in marketing. How did you get into like the, the crypto space of it? Um, but were you in crypto before or this is kind of your first, um, you know, dalliance with, with the crypto games and, and the crypto area? So I was in the crypto space in since I was, uh, so I've done uh, the exchange here in the US actually. I was in Minnesota when I was 16. Uh, for one year, I've been in Minnesota. Oh, okay. Uh, wow. I was close Minneapolis. Yes. So when I was there, I actually started uh, watching crypto. Basically, it was the time when uh, there was the first bull run for Bitcoin when it reached around uh, 20K or something like that. Uh, so that was the first time that I actually started to know the crypto space, Bitcoin, etc. Uh, after that, I started to look into, look into crypto to invest in a, in a few cryptocurrencies. So obviously a small amount because I was a teenager and I wasn't working at the time. Uh, but uh, until uh, when I until when I was 18, I started just wor uh, looking at uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and then I started to watch something else also in the space. But basically, uh, I wasn't really looking at the, you know, the crypto games until probably when the beginning of 2021. So like, not the beginning, it was like uh, June of 2021. So that's okay. where I found out about the crypto games. And basically the first crypto game that I found out was actually Luvium. Mm -hmm. yep. So, yeah. Yeah. So basically they are the first project that we, we found out. I found out personally. Uh, and uh, I understood how the, all the ecosystem work, how the plate to work, uh, what were the issues with the plate to uh, in the current market and things like that. And basically that's the way I found out about the crypto games, but also about NFTs, uh, et cetera. Okay. Very it was good. basically, uh, actually how I found out about Illuvium, if that's a question, is yeah, through, yeah. It, it was through uh, uh, an Italian, uh, um, an Italian YouTube channel. Uh, it was very, very small at the time. So at the beginning of June or something, it was like super small. Its name is uh, NFT Blockchain Italy or something like that. And uh, he is one of, well, he is one big investor in Illuvium. So that's how I found out about Illuvium. And 
after that, I just understood how everything, how everything work and yep. Yeah. Cool. Very cool. And then, and then you, so how did you get involved with this game? How did you, do you know, you know, the other co-founder or the team already? How did you get, did you get pulled into it? What, you know, how, how did all right. it all get happened? So maybe, maybe if, if I share my screen and I look, I show you the people, it will be yeah. a little bit easier to, for you all to understand. I can, or in I can general pull for it. the audience, audience. Do you want me to pull up the website here? Okay. If I you can... go to the yeah, team, go or... on the, okay. the last part where, Yes, go on the team, like in the, okay. the last part. So I have the, the website up. They can see it on, on the... Okay, the so screen. basically you, you will see a few people. Uh, we will yep. uh, release... We actually have already released the full team, but basically we are all boxed, obviously. For example, I am on, I'm not on the website right now, but because that website is a beta, and they will be in this week. It will be released like the full version of the website with all the team and everything. But okay. basically, uh, you will see two people, the, a few people, but the, the two founder are Luca, uh, Luca, Luca Migliotti, right, and then right there is the, the yeah, and then there is yeah, and then there is the COO, that is Federico. Okay, so me and Federico are longtime friends. We started. Uh, uh, we met each other in class. We were high school, uh, you know, uh, classmates. Uh, so after the, the high school and everything, uh, uh, we started building brands. We started with uh, everything that I mentioned before. So we started drop shipping. After that, we started building brand. After that, we started making also, other than that, also an agency uh, for growing brands. And uh, Luca basically instead is... Uh, past experience. He was a game developer. He started developing games since he was 14 and he started working on Anted Space since he was 18. Um, yes. So, it, I, it, and he is uh, uh, 23 or 24. <laughs> I don't remember. Oh, okay. he, I think it's 23 or 24 right now. So basically, um, right now, uh, so basically what happened is that uh, Luca uh, created the Italian Games Factory, that is the company that owns Haunted Space, uh, four years ago. And, uh, and uh, it's been four years that they started developing uh, the, the game. So, oh, wow. Okay. That's, yes. that's really so, cool uh, here. Yeah. In fact, uh, it will be released, the single player game will be released on September on PlayStation, Xbox, and Steam. Uh, this September, September 2022. And basically, um, me and more, more than me, Federico actually, uh, started uh, to understand the NFT and crypto space, mostly NFT space, uh, from like, oh, started really in deep with uh, the NFT space from like September or uh, August, September of last year. And uh, actually he found out about Illuvium in the same time, at, at the same time as me. And uh, so the idea was, uh, we already have a game. We, so basically it went to Luca. That's how it, it went. So mm -hmm. we, we were already a good friend and everything also because one thing that I didn't mention is that Luca, older than having a, being a game developer, he actually started develop, uh, creating e-commerce and an agency. Uh, in the meanwhile, he was creating a triple A AAA game, basically. So he was, he is both, he has both a background on the game development side and on the marketing and the commerce side. So basically what happened, uh, is that Federico and Luca were two good friends and they also made a few e-commerce together. And so when Federico found out about Illuvium and how the play played where uh, games work it, uh, and everything regarding it. He explained everything to Luca, okay? And basically they started thinking about a multiplayer version of Haunted Space because the single player version is like, uh, I don't know if, have you ever played like Call of Duty? Yeah, yeah. So do you know there is a campaign mode and a multiplayer mode, right? Yep. Okay, so basically what happened is that the 
single player game is the campaign mode and the multiplayer game is like the multiplayer mode okay. now the single player game and so the campaign mode is going to be released on september and uh, last year it was already i'm not saying it was fully developed but it was like you know 60 70 percent developed okay? okay like i'm talking about like september of last year so they have already all the game and everything and uh, federico knew about that and so he went to look and said look there is illuvium illuvium is a great game uh but we actually have something that is already built because you have haunted space so what do you think about making uh, instead of making a normal multiplayer what do you think about uh, making a, a multiplayer play to earn and yeah. actually it was a really great idea. <laughs> like it yeah, was a, yeah. a super good idea, basically. Because uh, so right now in the, the in the play to earn world, there are three main problems. So what we understood basically, so what we analyzed and what we talked to people, how we talked to people and everything, we found out three main problems in the play to earn games. The first one, game sucks. Like they are not good. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep. Like, yeah, Both they, of they them, are yeah. Not they, yeah, they're yeah not... they are not fun. They are not good. They are not enjoyable. You will not play with your friend. You will not play in any way if they will not make you earn. And that's a big issue. Because if you think about it, if everyone wants to earn, uh, what is going to happen is going to create a Ponzi scheme. So basically, it's just like the money are, that are coming is just new people that are joining the game yeah and you, you as you can imagine that's not sustainable in the long there are no no ponzi scheme that have a long-term history because right. they are yeah. not sustainable uh, they will collapse so then there is a second issue that is about great games so instead the great games that i don't want to make any names but all the great games uh, are, i'm talking about like triple a play to earn games have a big issue that is, we don't know when they are going to be released. Like mm -hmm. basically, since taking, since developing a AAA game is really, really hard and really, really complex. And uh, this means that the release of the game is going, is going to be years, it can be years out. It can it can take like three, four, five years. Mainly, if you want to build something like similar to Star Atlas, okay. Uh, yeah. So it will take like a lot of time, a lot of time. Uh, so this is a second issue, but I think the biggest and largest issue is that there are no traditional gamers in the play to earn industry right now. There are only like 99% of the people are investors. They are not mm -hmm. like traditional gamers. They are not people that would like play like uh, every day and things like that. There are most of them, I don't want to say 99%, but a great, great percentage of just people that invest in project. And as I mentioned before, if everyone wants just to earn, what is going to create is just a Ponzi scheme. It's not going to create a right. sustainable long-term economy or sustainable long-term uh, project. Yeah, exactly. So, I'd... so basically yeah. we, we have found out all the solution about this. So as I mentioned before, we have a single player game. We started developing four years ago the game. So the game is like 90% on complete, like the single player will be released in the, on Steam on September, but uh, on PlayStation and Xbox, it will take a little bit longer, but it will be done in the Q4 of 2022. Uh, the multiplayer game instead is going to be released in Q2, Q3 of 2023. It will take uh -huh. a little bit more time. It's just for... So the graphics and the mechanics of the multiplayer game are the same as the single player. Like if you... Uh, we have also, for example, the demo. We obviously don't... Can not release publicly, but basically we have the demo. Like uh, everything is in place. There are a few bugs, but the game is there. Uh, the so also the for example the multiplayer is I don't want to say already done but a huge percentage of the game is already done so like we are like eighty percent done seventy percent wow. done for the multiplayer 
So also because, for example, I, I, okay, I will just finish and then I will explain also about the multiplayer. Okay. But basically, the, the multiplayer game is also already done. So yeah, so that, that, that's it. Like uh, that's, we have yeah. already done most of the work. That's really awesome to hear, actually, because most, especially in the crypto space, most games selling NFTs are it's like, all right, we're we're gonna release this NFT and then we'll develop the game and in, in years down the road. But to see here, you already have it mostly developed um, beforehand and have been years into it is really really awesome. Yeah. Other than that, I forgot to mention another. So basically, um, the single player game it will be on this on this platform. Okay. And the multiplayer game is actually the divide, going to be divided in two parts. So there is a free-to-play side and a play-to-earn side. So the free-to-play side is something like Fortnite, where you can play for free, you can buy skin if you want, you can buy whatever you want inside, like items, skins, etc., etc. Okay. And then there is a play-to-earn side. So the play-to-earn side will be a normal play-to-earn game. Normal, it's not really normal, but it will be connected with a crypto. There are going to be in-game NFTs, etc., mm -hmm. etc. Cetera, et cetera. Um, the the difference between them, why? So the question is like, why would you make two games for the multiplayer? The reason is that the multiplayer free-to-play is going to be also on PlayStation, Xbox, and Steam. Okay. While the play to earn is not going to be on those uh, on these platforms, but the reason is that uh, right now this platform doesn't really want don't really want these kind of games. Yeah. And obviously the reason is because they will not have any margin on the on the marketplace. So yep. that's the, yep. the reason. But I'm one hundred percent sure that one probably maybe two years they will allow blockchain games. I, I'm pretty sure they are already working on something because uh, yeah. that's going to be like 100% the future. Like for example, Epic Games has just released a news that they are going to make a game or they are partnering with a crypto game. So it will take like a few years as something that is really innovative, but 100% for like, I'm sure, I'm 100% sure this is the future. Like there is no way, yep. like for example, our game, our game is like, we are, what, what we are doing, why we are so innovative is not really about, we are making a, like a really good game, a triple A game with, and we have won a, a lot of prizes for, uh, for the, already for the game is, and it isn't already been released, but it's because what we are trying to do is we are releasing the single player. We are releasing the multiplayer free to play we are taking all these traditional gamers because we are, you know, we are doing a traditional marketing for the for the traditional games. Okay. And we are taking all these traditional gamers, and then we are trying to move them to the play to wear. And the question is, why would they move from like the multiplayer to the multiplayer play to wear, like the multiplayer free to play to the multiplayer free to, uh, play to wear? The reason is that if you are someone that plays like five hours a day, six hours a day, our game, mm -hmm. uh, and you would just spend time and money in it, why would you not play the play to wear? Like the right. play to wear. Why you want to, yeah. Give yeah, it the opportunity, of, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like if you're really good and you are like a competitive player, or also if you are a good gamer, there is literally no reason why you wouldn't play the play to wear game. Like that, that's the thing. And uh, that's why I'm 100% sure that it's going to be the future of gaming because basically the only difference from traditional gaming and future of gaming and sorry and play to earn is that a portion of the earnings of the company is going to the players. That's the only difference. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was actually we talked about this in, in the last episode too. Is like I think like 100% right now game companies are kind of keeping crypto games out of it but in the future i think all games are going to be crypto um and they're all going to integrate nfts and play to earn um it's just the way kind of things are trending it's like you said it is the future and why wouldn't the gamers be given that opportunity why wouldn't they want to earn um while they're spending hours of their time and in investing into this game instead of just pouring money and time into it why wouldn't you want something back for that so i completely agree with you um on that front for sure 
So I think uh, now would be a good time to let's let's play the trailer for your game, and and let everyone see which one we, uh, the single player one or the multiplayer so teaser. We I, we have a few different ones. We can we can play all of them right now if you want to break it up. Um, the the one I was gonna play is the one right on the website, the watch trailer on the website. Um, and then we can jump. Okay. I saw you just released a new one on Twitter as well, just yesterday or and today. I think there was a, a thing. So we'll go through all of them and we can talk through as as we go. All right, let me uh, pull that up here. All right, so we're going to the, the first trailer on the website. Here we go. In the second era of the human empire, sonic matter was discovered in the galaxy of Netaran. It was here that humans decided to build the Metal Mother facility to harvest the sonic matter, the most precious element in the universe. But it wasn't long before they discovered they were not alone. Very cool. It almost it almost reminds me of like way back in the day, like a descent and uh, that type of you know the terminal velocity where you have your ship and you know flying and blowing things up and stuff. It looks really cool. Um, so we'll go. I'll see it, but is it the one on PlayStation? Because I don't remember it, the one we put it was. On. Yeah, it was the one on uh, PlayStation. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 So let's um should we jump over the one you just posted on Twitter, the official cinematic teaser? Yeah, yeah. Is that one? Okay, let's let's do that one. This one um they had just posted on their Twitter just I think I believe it was yesterday you released it. So this is a, a brand new um It was a couple no, it was a Friday. Friday, okay. So we'll we'll jump into that one. Let's let's get that one going. Mankind was haunted by its past. We were about to fix our mistakes. Everyone was doing their part. We thought we were so close to a new beginning. But we couldn't be more wrong. Cool. So there's the the Twitter and the the website guys, hauntedspace.io and hauntedspace underscore is their Twitter. Uh, so check those out and you take a look at those videos yourself if you want. Um, another thing, while well, while I have the screen up, I wanted to to point out and show is you guys saw this that you're on your guys' Twitter too. Um, oh, where was it? They were given the award, right, for uh, Forbes Best Emerging NFT Project of 2022. Yeah. So congratulations for that. That's awesome. Let me pull that up and, and show everyone a, 
today, today, no, or yesterday, and I remember, we won also, no, we didn't won, we got second place for the Acton uh, of Next Type, the, the UOB Acton or something like that. That's, uh, UOB is the biggest Asian exchange, I think, or something. And we won internationally, like, the, wow. the second place. That's a good thing. And we also yeah. won, this is something that we won, like, last year, but we won also the Epic Games Mega Grant. The Epic Games Mega Grant is a grant that Epic Games gives to... Epic Games, if you someone from the audience doesn't know, is the the one the 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 game the the game company of Fortnite. So basically, okay, yep. they give the most promising uh, uh, project a grant, a monetary grant, and we also won that. Uh, and yeah, basically, cool. the, these are the main prizes. The the epic prize okay. you got for, for that's basically yeah. for game funding, right? Yes, exactly. And okay. also we we won actually the first playable fund or that is uh, something that the European Union gives to the most promising uh, title uh, game sorry uh, for uh, for uh, for the development of the game. Uh, it's also a monetary prize. We also won other than that. Um, no, that, that's all basically. Right. But we have yeah. been public. <laughs> that's a, that's uh, a lot of awards for a game that's not even out yet. So that's yeah. awesome. We we have been published by Xbox, uh, the official channel of Xbox, the official channel of PlayStation, the one you uh, showed, uh, the official channel of EGN. If I'm not wrong, EGN is like the biggest news gaming newspaper in the world, or uh, something like that. Uh, so that's a, also a pretty good one. And we have already, I'm not sure about the exact number of wish lists on Steam, but we have around 30,000 wish lists on Steam. Wow. So that's also pretty good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Very cool. Yeah so, yeah. so basically, we, we have already a lot of stuff and uh, we haven't uh, released anything. I, I'm not saying like the game I'm talking about, but yeah. Yeah. yeah, the game is is there. There are a lot of videos on uh, of gameplays in our uh, in our Twitter. There are a ton of them. I just released one today, so yeah. Yeah, I saw that one as well. Um, yeah, so a lot of very cool footage. You actually see um, in-game footage, and um, like I said, very reminiscent for me, and I'm sure a lot of the older. Uh, gamers back when Descent or Criminal Velocity, the, kind of a, a third-person view behind your ship flying around, loved those games. So I'm really excited to um, to see this one and get in, get in and play it. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Um, we all. So go ahead. No, go on. No, go on. Go on. Uh, well, yeah, I was just wondering. So the, you said the the single-player game is going to be really first. And that's that's going to be completely apart from you know the play to earn crypto NFT type of stuff. So it'll just be beyond PC, Xbox, PlayStation, all the standard standard ones. And then I was looking at your timeline um, a little bit earlier today. And then in the next phase, you said is there going to be a play to earn like mini game um, before you release the play to earn game? I don't know if, if I don't know if you can go into that or if that's still kind of a no, it's okay. I, I can talk about that. So basically, it's it's a, a mini game, but we um we are not sure about releasing it. Basically, the reason why we are not sure it's because actually we are pretty confident we can release like the beta of the multiplayer oh, okay. of the real multiplayer earlier than the mini game. So the mini game it was just something that you know just to keep the hype really high. Right, but if we if we can release like the beta of the multiplayer earlier than the mini game, it's not really too much useful. Yeah, so, it's not really necessary. Yeah, then. yeah, yes, that's not necessary. It was like more a marketing move, uh, the mini game. So actually, uh, probably you check that on the website. We are going to release the new website in one or two days, so that okay. that is going to be uh deleted but basically if you check also on the medium there is the new roadmap uh you will 
uh, if I'm not wrong, you will not find it uh, okay. in, in there. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah. So basically, that, that that's the that's the reason. The reason is that we 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 thought about earlier uh, this year because um, we were not sure if we could deliver the multiplayer in uh, you know so soon, but actually we can. So we we thought about like it would be useless to do it. That's that's awesome. That's the best reason to be, to um, <laughs> alter alter the timeline and not have that because you're you're gonna have the the full version of the game or, and play to earn already up. So yeah, why why make a, a mini game? Um, so yeah, that's awesome. Um, let's let's talk about the the play to earn aspect of it. And the I know you're you're launching your first NFTs very soon. Um, can you explain a little bit of what those are? I don't know if you have dates yet and, and prices, but not only just that, but what are they? Are they FIPS? Are they, you know, pilots? What are they? What are they going to be used for? And what do they get um, everyone that's going to be minting and potentially wanting to purchase some of these? Okay, so there is a big difference between the NFTs that we are going to make. So the, this first uh, collection is an OG collection that is going to be on Ethereum. So on OpenSea, uh, the reason why it's on Ethereum is basically just for marketing because we are going to be living on OpenSea and so we are going to have way more reach compared to making uh, NFTs in our private uh, marketplace. So basically there is a big difference. So this is, there is the OG NFTs and the in-game NFTs. So the OG NFTs are the avatar. So probably if you scroll on Twitter, you will see some avatar. They are the OG NFTs. The in-game NFTs are going to be the spaceship. So there is a okay. big difference between them. So the OG NFTs are something more for like investors. So it's something that if you are an investor, you will purchase. The in-game NFTs is something that instead, actually it's also for investors, but mainly it's for gamers. The reason is that if you don't... Oh, the, the release of the in-game NFTs, so the spaceship will be around January. So uh, if you don't own a uh, uh, spaceship, you will not be able to play the play to wear. That's a big difference. Instead, I... if you own OG NFTs, the OG NFTs gives you mostly economic benefit. So I cannot really talk about the perks right now because we haven't released it. Probably we will release in a week or two. But most, the big difference is that the OG NFTs is something that you would purchase in order to make money. That's the thing. The in spaceship uh, NFTs is something that you would purchase in order to make money. Yes, because it's a play to earn. So it, the, the idea is to earn from the investment, but right. mostly also for playing the actual game. So that's the big difference. Uh, instead, that the OG NFT is something that will allow you also to earn more inside the game, but it's not something that is necessary in order to play the game. That's the big difference. Okay, okay, very cool. So the OG is the the kind of the pre-launch NFT perk possible, you know, perk coming with that. And um, but you won't need one of those to play the play to earn game in the future. You're going to need the spaceship that will come released. I'm guessing a long sometime with the play to earn uh, release of the game, so that's a, a good distinction. Um, they will the the, uh, the in -game, game NFTs will come after the listing of the token, basically. Okay. So that's somewhere. So we are thinking to make the the listing on the of the token on the Q1 of 2023. Uh, if it's going to be postponed, it's basically only due to market condition because the market is going to be even worse than it is right now. Uh, yeah. So basically, it will depend on that. But basically, the idea right now is to make the the listing of the tokens in the beginning of um, of next year, basically. Okay. Cool. So it might happen that we have the game earlier than the listing. Yes, it, it can happen. Yeah. yeah <laughs> we, I mean, uh, we, hope, I... we hope it's not going to happen because it's going to be a little bit weird, but yes. Yeah, I mean, but there, I mean, there are games that do that. So it doesn't necessarily, the token doesn't necessarily have to come first, um, especially if you can have in-game currency and then it translates to the token later. Um, 
I've seen games do that, so that's not, you know, out of uh, sorts, I guess. Yeah. Um, very cool. So you touched on it will give you perks to, to purchase this, this OG one. You said it's going to be, is that one is that you have an official launch for the OG? Do you have a date for the OG launch yet or not yet? No. Just coming up. Just no, coming yes. Up. I can say that it will be released in Q3 of 2022, but okay. I cannot say the date basically. Right. Okay. Um, so if you guys are interested in, in getting in the one of the OG NFTs, join their Discord. Haunted Space Discord. I, all the links, all their um, information will be in the uh, comments and under all the in the descriptions below um, on each of the platforms. So you can jump in, talk to them in there, and um, find out all about that. Um, I think. Let me see. Let's let, let's talk a little more about the gameplay and what's. You know, I mean, obviously we, we saw some of the videos, but what is kind of the, the idea behind the game and um, in the play to earn aspect, maybe like the, the loop of the game, what are people trying to do to earn this token? Are they mining? Are they fighting? You know, what what is it? And what can you say? Maybe some of it you can't release yet, but um, what you can talk about. Think about the game. Okay, about the game, I can release everything. All so right, basically, awesome. basically, so... Let's make a distinction. So, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, let's talk about the single player and then move, move to the single multiplayer so it will be easier. So, the single yeah, player, yeah. as I mentioned before, is something like a campaign. So, you have to do like the lore, you, you, you have to go around the space, you have to do missions, you have a ton of missions to do. Like, the, the game, the single player game is huge, it's something really, really gigantic. Uh, I haven't personally even played it all because uh, it's it's so big actually I haven't I just look at like three worlds and it's <laughs> like 25 worlds. Like wow, so wow. just yeah just to make you understand how big it is. Um, so basically the single player is something that you have to do missions, you have to do side quests and things like that. The multiplayer game is going to be a little bit different. So basically, the multiplayer game you have to think about like Call of Duty. So you will have well, okay. Let's start with this. The multiplayer mode is going to have three modes at the moment of the release. Then it's going to have way more modes. But after the release, the three modes are a death match, a free for all, and an open world. So the death match and the free for all is something that you have to imagine like. Call of Duty, so you will have an arena, arena. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce it, but uh, <laughs> basically, basically you have an arena. So you have a map, and you have like to destroy the the enemies that are going to be online online players. So it's that, it's like Call of Duty, but instead that you are you have your gun, you have your spaceship, you go around, you kill your enemies, etc. You kill the enemies uh, that are going to be other like player, etc. And who? Uh, who gets first? So, for example, who won win the deathmatch game will get the reward. If you win the free for all, if you get to, like in the first three places of the free for all, you will win a, a prize. There is going to be a reward, a monetary reward. Uh, so that's the the idea. The so upper for, world. So, so let me interrupt there for a second. For, so, for those, are you, you like first place? You take the award, right? Are the players going to have to um you know to join they have to put in 100 tokens and then to, as an entry fee or is that just uh, the the prize supported by the game or how does that work or do you... so basically okay so it's a, bit, a little bit so you have to buy the nft the right. nfts are going to be uh, as i mentioned before i i didn't mention maybe but they're going to be a limited number Okay, so you, there are just a limited number of uh, in-game NFTs, so spaceship, the number depends on the number of online player that plays the game. Mm -hmm. uh, after that, you will need to uh, basically buy the fuel and also to, if you get too, many, too much damage, you will need to repair the spaceship and you need to pay uh, to repair and to pay for the fuel 
with the utility token because there are oh, going okay. to be two tokens. The governance token is something for the DAO where you can stake stuff and etc. And then there is the utility token that is something that you actually use in the game. So the utility token is something that you will need to repair your spaceship to fix your spaceship. You need to use for uh, buying the fuel, uh, so things like that. And so, like joining in an actual game, it doesn't have a fee, but you will need to, you know, you, to buy the fuel, to buy okay. the, to fix your spaceship if you uh, get too much damage in the previous game and things like that. Right. Basically, that's cool. I, that's I think that's a really cool um, way to do it. Dynamic to you'll still have people paying, you know, the repair make, things that make sense. You pay to repair. You think you pay to for the fuel for your ship, but you're not just paying money to enter a game. Um, so I think that's a really cool way to do it. It makes a lot more sense than kind of just yeah. It's basically style. to make the the economy sustainable. Like right. there are there is, like all the uh, there are some games that just tell you like. Oh, you don't have to pay anything. Uh, you j will just earn, but that's not sustainable. That will become yeah. a Ponzi scheme. Right. So that's yeah. that, 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 like there is, if you need to pay something in order to you know to play the game. Otherwise, like like uh, few people, a uh, few people don't understand this. Like if you don't have to, like if you don't put money inside the game, uh, like money doesn't appear magically. They have to come <laughs> yeah. from somewhere. <laughs> yeah. So if you yeah. can put like uh, money inside the game, then there are other ways, other ways in which the the money are 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 put in the game. And the only way they're in order to put money inside the game is that other player put their money. So, so basically, yeah, yeah, that's the only way to make this sustainable. Other than that, we are actually putting like. Uh, a percentage of the multiplayer free-to-play uh, earnings, a percentage of the single-player earnings inside the play to earn in order to make it completely sustainable. Like right. we, we are for the long term. We we don't want. We are not like uh, going to make like a, a thing that where we we release the game and we disappear. Also because. It, this this game is like so innovative and something so new that uh, the, 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 it's like you you know it uh, there, it makes no sense to make a short-term project also yeah. for us yeah that's the, the, yeah. The, making Completely. a new game will not make like so much profit as much as continuing building this game so that's exactly thing. yeah and this it, it sounds like in the look of it it can have years maybe tens of years lifetime um, for a game like this and i do like tokenomics um especially in games that are extremely complex and, and a lot of people don't understand i mean there's a lot of games that are hitting this wall and issue so far as where all these people are coming to play to earn and they want to earn all this money but then you don't have investors anymore that are putting the money in um and so there is that dynamic in some of the crypto games they're running into that there's just a you can't keep paying out when money's not coming in so i'm glad you guys are thinking about that and and, and taking you know all that into consideration. And also, then, for like the said, tokenomics is mm -hmm. something that we like reviewed for like three months or something like that. Like today, yeah. it was like, because the thing is, we started making the tokenomics uh, on February. Uh, after that, uh, we got an advi a first advisor. Then we got a second advisor. Then we got uh, like two weeks ago, we got incubated by CDFI for a, like another review and see if I, you know, it's like the biggest launch pad in the space. So if yeah, I, they, I just like, they, that, yeah. yeah, yeah. So if they don't, you know, if, if they, if they fail, um, making the tokenomics, basically, uh, any games uh, are going to fail basically because they have the most experience and we 100%, you know, trust them. And uh, also for this reason, uh, what we did, we made uh, like, we we made like the tokenomics, tokenomics uh, uh, is being reviewed like I think by five or six people plus CDFI. So it's wow. something that we really want to be like on place. We really want to be make the best tokenomics possible because we know that uh, we saw, but also for example CDFI, so a ton of good projects failing because of a bad tokenomics. So yep. our priority, other obviously than making a, 
the game as much fun as possible was to and obviously uh, as enjoyable as possible was to make a good tokenomics because we understand that if the tokenomics is going to sell as is going to you know to uh, it's not good it's going to destroy the game basically and there right. were, i cannot mention uh, the na names but you can see around like a lot of games that I, I personally played it and they were actually you know good games they completely failed yeah. because yep. they, they, they made few a uh, few mistakes yeah it and it happens and it's sad but um you know it it's something that happens that like and people can learn from because those games were so early and they really didn't think about a lot of that stuff and so now you know game now can look back on those failures and see okay what happened here how does we prevent this and, and like you said you you're putting in funds to start with from you know presumably marketing some of the marketing funds might go into the game and and you know some of the sales of the game which is great but ultimately you can't keep putting the, the company can't keep putting funds in if they want to be and those need to come from you know the, the yeah. circulation so that's great that you're thinking about it. and then have all those people reviewing it I, it um really lends to a solid solid market and long term for the, the project and game so that's really exciting to hear yeah so i forgot the previously we talked about the the death bench and the free for all mm -hmm. and there is also the open world well, okay the open world is like something that as i mentioned before all the 25 worlds that I mentioned before in the single player is something that people can go around playing online with their friends, etc. It's like GTA, basically. Okay. Where you go around, you like you, you chill, etc. But you can also do like, for example, uh, missions and things like that, where you earn resources, and when you and those resources are needed in order to uh, upgrade your spaceship. So oh, okay. everything, uh, everything is connected, and everything has has been, uh, you know, um, there are a few things that I'm not explaining here because the game economy is like huge. But basically, everything is connected, and everything is like uh, really precise that people cannot put bots or things like that, and yeah. etc. So is there? going into that a little bit in the open world is there going to be like a crafting system and different things like that where, where players themselves can craft these materials and sell them to other players on like marketplace or is that all kind of facilitated um no it's just kind of earned no uh the reason why we can do that is for the reason i mentioned before so if we would allow people to farm resources and sell to the open market in an open market it will create a, an extremely inflationate market so basically they will just put bots or uh, you know also if they are not bots just like you know an an army of people just mm -hmm. farming and selling right. it on the market and the the price of these resources will go to zero in like a day so right. we cannot do that that's the reason we cannot do that and basically the resources this is something that we are reviewing, but the resources are going to be probably centralized. Okay. So it's like, uh, basically they are going to centralize. So if you want to buy an extra resources, you have to buy, buy for the, from basically from the outlet space. So you cannot buy in the open market. And that's something because if we allow to create an open market for resources, people will just uh, destroy and inflationate. Yeah. In yeah. everything it could get a, a very easy, yeah. yes in english sorry what, what was that in english is, what? It, is it correct in inflationate inflationary when you it's like an economic term I, i'm not sure if it's right I, i'm it not sure <laughs> okay. Um, okay so okay one more one more question about that this uh, you'll need to purchase the ship nft to play this game that's basically your your price of entry um are all these ship nfts going to be the same are you going to have different ships or um and you start with one nft that's the exact same for everyone and then they can upgrade it different ways or how does that work so everything here might change a little bit yeah but yep, basically, okay but basically how it's going to work is that there are going to be two different kind of level 
So there is a rarity level and there is a spaceship level. The rarity level is something that if you buy uh, uh, like higher is the rarity or you are going to earn. Okay. So basically, if you have the uh, most rare spaceship, you are going to earn more compared to someone that bought a normal spaceship. Okay. 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 The level instead is a little bit different because uh, the level doesn't affect the the monetary price that you get. So the level is something that you will get when you get. So basically, the level you you can upgrade the level of the spaceship through the resources, and so you ne you don't need to actually pay for it. But actually, the spaceship level is something that will increase like your attack, your defense your uh i don't know your special attack and uh, things like that so it's there are two different things one is actually for the reward and one is for the actual game like for example the real level is something that is going to be also in the free-to-play game okay meanwhile the rarity level is not because the rarity level is just for earning more cool so that's that's a good cool something might so change want... here Something might change here, so don't of take course, all the yeah. words I'm saying. Uh, everything, really everything's like... subject to change. Yes, exactly. Like uh, yeah. everything that is not that has not publicly been publicly released might change a little bit. Like this is the like you know the you know the biggest uh, the early concept basically. Yeah, this is the concept. But something might change basically. Cool. So that I, I do. That's a good. So just to kind of. To review that for everyone the the rarity of the nft that you buy or, or mint will affect the maybe the multiplier or whatever how much you can earn from using that ship but all the ships that you would get from there start out at level one so they're all on equal playing ground and then you upgrade them to get stronger so no one's it's not like a, a play to or a, a pay to pay to win type scenario where someone buys the best ship and no one can destroy them. They're all starting out on equal playing ground. Exactly. That's what, cool. what we are looking for to make. That's that's good because I, there's there's games, not even crypto games, just normal games, play to earn and people pour thousands of dollars in and no one can touch them and it just makes the game not fun for people that don't have the money to put it in. So I'm glad you guys thought about that too. The issue is that those games, uh, um, so here is the thing, the issue is always like you, if you make something like that, you are like deleting a huge market percentage. That's the thing. Like, like also with crypto games, like if you don't find a way to make traditional players play the game, uh, traditional gamers play the game, uh, the issue is that you are taking uh, a a, per a percentage of the market is going to be really, really tiny. And that's yeah. an issue. Like, uh, yeah. you are losing so much opportunities. That's the thing. Yeah, the really, the, the crypto gaming space is tiny at this point um, in relation yes. to gaming. Um, and so it, it's going to be growing a lot, but you, you're completely correct. If you're targeting just the crypto game market, then there's not, that's not a big... Uh, pool pool player player pool that you're you're kind of going for so yeah it looks like you guys have a lot of different plans especially i really um congratulate you and commend you for looking at that first and releasing your single player game first because that will get people playing it all the the standard gamers playing it and then seeing oh there's this other like addition to it where i can start playing start earning like the i think at some point, it's going to click for people and all these gamers. Because I know a lot of gamers right now that are completely anti-crypto, anti-NFTs. And I, I think it's just they haven't taken that step yet to see, you know, how this is going to be a good thing. And it's not a, just a complete scam. It's not, you know, just a picture of a, a JPEG that they're buying, right? Exactly. Well, very cool. I think we're, we're coming up on an hour here. Um, is there any additional things, uh, last minute things you want to say or want me to pull up on the website or anything uh, to the viewers? No, everything is clear. Just join our Discord. 
and find out everything about uh, any question that you might they might have about the project we are super open we will do a live stream on twitch on twitch uh on friday where we can we show the actual single player game while i play me or luca played it uh so where we actually show the game because uh one of the issues that m people might think that the game uh, is like something that uh, you know, it's not really developed. Their game is actually developed, so we will show it like on, on a live stream. And yeah, that, that's it. And also, we will have um, other AMAs and things like that in the, during the week. Okay, very cool. So, right, guys, um, like you said, join this Discord. I will put all of their um, link down in the descriptions below. So check all those out. Join the Discord. Check their Medium get it on their Twitch and uh, keep following. Um, and yeah, thank you, Leonardo, for coming by and talking with us. Um, we Sorry for my, my bad pronunciation. I tried my best. Oh, yeah, uh, fantastic, fantastic. <laughs> Not any issues at all. <laughs> um, yeah, all right. thanks again for uh, joining us. And I'm sure we will be seeing you again in the future. All right, bye-bye.